Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy. Morning. Mr. President, Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, let me express sincere appreciation to the President of the General Assembly for convening this high-level meeting of the General Assembly and for making mediation one of the top priorities of the agenda. It is highly significant that your election, Mr. President, coincided with the General Assembly's adoption of Landmark Resolution 65-283 on strengthening the role of mediation in the peaceful settlement of disputes, conflict prevention and resolution. I also wish to acknowledge the important contribution of Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who highlighted prevention through mediation as a one of five imperatives in his address to the General Assembly last September. May I also thank Finland and Turkey for the impulse they have been giving to this process. Mr. President, peace, liberty, and prosperity are key goals for every human community. But disputes are inevitable. States have always had conflicting interests and views. Customary international law and the United Nations Charter set forth a general prohibition on the use of force. Whenever disputes arise, states have the obligation to find every possible means to achieve a peaceful settlement. As Article 33, Paragraph 1 of the Charter recalls, one of these means is mediation. The tools it names, mediation, negotiation, inquiry, conciliation, may not be binding instruments of dispute settlement. They leave states free to accept or to reject the proposed solutions. But recourse to such instruments is indeed mandatory whenever so specified in a bilateral or multilateral treaty. This procedural obligation must be fulfilled independently of the merits of the dispute. On June 22, 2011, this Assembly adopted Resolution 65-283 by consensus and pointed to the way forward. <coughs> we are already invested with a challenge by its title, strengthening the role of mediation in a peaceful settlement of disputes. I'm underlined in the title because that shows that we must build upon existing provisions and draw all their logical consequences. Operative paragraph one reiterates that all member states should strictly adhere to their obligation as laid down in the Charter of the United Nations, including the peaceful settlement disputes, conflict prevention and resolution. States are also encouraged to use the mediation capacities of the United Nations as well as those of regional and sub-regional organizations where applicable, and to promote mediation in their bilateral and multilateral relations. The resolution, likewise, invites member states as appropriate to optimize the use of mediation and other tools mentioned in Chapter 6 of the Charter. Member states have therefore expressed their conviction that recourse to mediation must be encouraged in all possible way and must be encouraged as a clear obligation for all states. In other words, recourse to instruments of settlement must be the rule, must be the rule, not the exception. But there are states, unfortunately, that despite their obligations under treaty law, prefer to ignore these obligations and refuse to open other avenues to a meaningful solution. This in my view, in my strong conviction, is not in keeping with the UN Charter and Resolution 65-283. We should avoid such situations, and we should reflect on developing a general rule of international law, a general rule whereby recourse must be made to mediation wherever and whenever provided by a treaty. In other words, any country might find itself in a situation in which mediation is not only useful, but it is necessary. And in these cases, one party may refuse to resort to mandatory settlements, instruments contained in a bilateral agreement. In other cases, the dispute itself may hinge on how to interpret and implement fundamental principles of international law or UN conventions. 
In all such situations, member states should not be allowed to ignore the many options available for a peaceful settlement, and mediation must be allowed to play the role for which it was envisioned. Another proposal would be to strengthen the UN ability to intervene in disputes, making resort to mediation mandatory in all circumstances as a necessary step in the fulfillment of the obligation to settle disputes. <laughs> mandatory mediation should take, therefore, place every time a dispute arises, from a denial of judicial cooperation or emergence of a conflict on jurisdiction. In these cases, states would have to, in good faith, accept the mediation of the United Nations. When there is a denial of judiciary cooperation, infringement of national jurisdiction or practice or of discriminatory trade policy in violation of agreements, should not mediation be perceived as a compulsory tool to avoid any negative development in the relationship between two states? And should not the decision to dismiss or elude or reject mediation be considered as a clear violation of the international rules on peaceful relations? Openness to mediation has always been a hallmark of my country's poli policies. Italy strives not only to find solutions to diverging bilateral or multilateral interests, but also to promote dialogue between different cultures and communities. In Italy's experience, dialogue is more productive than confrontation, and compromise for Italy does not mean giving up one's right. It means creating a win-win situation for all the parties we can live with. But you should as well recognize clear rules to abide by. By such rules, for example, the parties to mediation should, should be required not to reject the neutral mediator who has been chosen, not to obstruct each other, to be supportive of, of mediation, and to make a good faith effort to find a joint solution. In this context, some crucial aspects deserve our attention. Finding a new balance between the role of the UN system and regional organizations, enhancing the role of gender, supporting the network of mediators, increasing mediation capacity, especially with the UN, harnessing the potential of mediation in the field of interreligious and culture, intercultural dialogue. Mr. President, Italy praises the group of friends of mediation which drives the UN agenda in the field and foster a culture of mediation. And under your guidance, Mr. President, together with the Finnish and Turkish co-chair, the UN is raising awareness on the role played by governmental and non-governmental actors, the civil society. Italy has participated in the exchange of views that is given shape to the new guidance on effective mediation. And in, the, in this debate, we focused on various issues. The process resulted in a better understanding on this, of this, this tool potential as a successful, cost-effective way of addressing international disputes. Mr. President, Inter Italy is contributing to drafting the resolution that pursuant to 65-2A3 will be submitted to the General Assembly in September. We welcome the Turkish decision to set up a UN regional mediation center in Istanbul the center will surely be able to address various stakeholders and to call to them to work together and bring their expertise to the table. Drawing on the rich diversity of its civil society, Italy can offer its experience and lessons learned in this process. One final consideration, Mr. President. Mediation is crucial in situation of armed conflict or internal unrest. But in such context, mediators should never forget that there is no impunity for human rights violations and international crimes. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy.